Once we have this, it looks like we can just cancel out the du and then du, and we get dy dx, which works very nicely, right? I know, it's just a joke. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Okay, this is a very confusing one. We have y is equal to f of u, and u is equal to g of x. Our goal is to write an expression for d2y dx2. Let's have a look. So firstly, y is a function of u, and u is a function of x. This is about chain rule. If we want to get the first derivative, dy dx, well, you look at the y equation, differentiate that with respect to u, and let's write it down like this first. But we have to use the chain rule because u is a function of x, so we multiply by the derivative of u with respect to x. And now here's the common joke. Once we have this, it looks like we can just cancel out the du and then du, and we get dy dx, which works very nicely, right? I know, it's just a joke. It does not work like that, technically. And I feel guilty I have done it before, but anyways. Now, once you see the expression for the second derivative, you will see why we really cannot just like, cancel that out. Okay, to get d2y dx2, we need to differentiate this with respect to x again. On the left-hand side, taking the derivative of the first derivative gives us a second derivative, and you see we have d and d right here, so that's d2, and then the y, and then we have dx and dx, so we are going to write that as dx squared. And this explains the notation for the second derivative, why we have the 2 here and then the 2 here, d and d, d2, dx dx, dx2. Right here on the bottom, don't use the parentheses. Nobody does that. So write it down like this. It's perfect. Now on the right-hand side, we have a product of two things. So we have to use the product rule. Right here, I'm going to keep the first function. So that's dy du. And we are going to differentiate the second function with respect to x. Let me write here as d dx of that. Then we add the second function, and then we multiply by the derivative of the first, with respect to x. And this is the confusing part. d dx, and then dy du. For this, it's just that, dy du. For this, dx dx, so that's the same situation as what I explained earlier. We have dx2 on the bottom d d u like that right so we can write it as d2 u yeah so so far so good this just keep it but how are we going to write it down an expression for that though can we write d d which is d2 and then the y and then put the dx and then the d u like this uh, technically, yes, but that's not the answer that they have, right? And if you do something like this, well, don't do this yet. Wait until calculus 3 when you do partial derivative and all that stuff. You'll be kind of doing this anyways. So this is how we are going to do it. So we still have d, d, y. We can write it as d, 2, y. That's okay. Now, y is a function of u, and u is a function of x. When we differentiate this with respect to x, we first differentiate whatever we have here with respect to u first. But originally we have du already, right? So it's like this, du and then another du. Okay, it's, it's kind of like this earlier. When we differentiate, we have to do it with respect to u first. So that's why it's like d dy, and then you have the du from here and another du. And then what you are going to do next is look at the u equation, differentiate that with respect to x. So you uh, have the du dx like that. I know this is bad, but you can really think about it as canceling this and canceling that, kind of. Now, we are going to finish it. You'll see that dy du d2 u dx2. I know you might still be confused about this. I'm going to explain this with a prime notation, but let me finish this first. This and that are the same. We can write it as du dx and then square. 
Right here, we can write it as D2Y DU2, like that. And that's the answer that they have as well. Now, in order for me to explain this better, especially this part, let's use the prime notation. You will see it will be better. Firstly, I'm going to put g of x into here, so we get y equals f of g of x. And then differentiate this. On the left-hand side, I will just put dy dx. But for this, when we differentiate that, I will just put a prime for the f. And the inside stays the same. But what else do we need to do? The chain rule. Look here what the inside is. Differentiate that and multiply it. And that's g prime of x. Now, to get d2y dx2, we have to differentiate this again. So use the product rule, I will keep the first function, f prime of g of x. And this right here is precisely what we have right here. dy du, y is f, and then we are doing it with respect to u. The input is the u. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of the second. This is the second function. Take the derivative of that. All we have to do is put another prime. So multiply by g double prime. So nice. And this is exactly what we have right here. d2u dx2. u is the g function. Now we add the second function. Just keep that. And this is precisely du dx. OK. We have to multiply by the derivative of the first. This right here has a prime already. Take the derivative of that, put another prime, and the input stays the same. So this is what we have right here. D2y with respect to u twice, technically. So this is du du, right? du squared like that. Okay. So this is what we have right here. But we have to use the chain rule one more time. Look at what we have inside here. Multiply by its derivative, and that's precisely g prime of x. That is this part, du dx. Now, we have two of the g prime of x, which is what we have right here. We can put that as g prime of x, which is du dx and then square. This, which is that, is the d2y du2 part. So hopefully this right here is clear. OK, hopefully like today's question, and because you watched the video until the end, I know you like math a lot, right? If so, I have a very good place for you guys to go so you can continue to learn more about math. And that is our sponsor today, Boolean.work. Boolean is an online learning platform that helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, and more. What I love most is how it forces you to think. You are not just passive reading or watching. You are solving real problems step by step. And that's how real learning should be. Personally, I like Brilliant because it reminds me how I learned math growing up by playing around with ideas and struggling a little until I really got it. It's that kind of hands-on thinking that helped me become a better problem solver and I see the same effect when I recommend it to my students. And if you're working on algebra or calculus, their courses are especially strong. Everything is built up to help you really understand. Go ahead and visit the link brain.work slash blackpenrepen or scan the QR code on screen or you can also click on the link in the description. When you do that, you will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So go ahead and check them out.